Hey guys, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Akusia Behini. If you're new, you're welcome. In today's video, if you're a tennis subscriber, thank you so much for always coming back. You know I love you. <laughs> thank you so much for always coming back. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my labor story, my bed story. It's long overdue. Now, I'm going to be sharing with you my labor story with my second child during a pandemic. It's Everything is different. Things have changed. I'm pretty sure a lot of you want to know how did you go through giving birth in because i asked myself the same thing last year when people were giving birth i didn't know i was gonna have a pandemic baby but we do so in today's video that's what i'm going to be sharing with you um i feel like this video is going to be really interesting because i i have two kids my first child i had her in ghana and then my second child i had her here in america so if you want to know the difference the whole vibe please keep on watching if you're interested in the channel wait what am i saying please subscribe to my channel it's not if you're interested my baby is sleeping so i'm trying not to wake her up but please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that um and without further ado let's just get into the video because this intro is giving me oh, i've done it like three times i'm tired let's just As some of you may or may this is a story time so I'm gonna get comfortable as some of you may or may not know I have two kids this is I have two girls so this is my second child um, my first daughter is three and my second child currently is a month old she's so cute she's sleeping so um, with my second daughter I my due date was supposed to be I'm gonna just go straight into it i don't know how labor stories are done i should have watched a couple of videos before coming on here but i figured you know what i got this so that's what i'm doing hi mommy she's waking up she'll probably she'll probably be the guest of the video oh she will okay so like i was saying i was meant to have her on the 22nd of may so i went for my last doctor's appointment I think a couple of days before the 22nd of May. Even before I went for that, I told my daughters that I wanted to do full term. So right at the end of 40 weeks, I was ready to have the baby. Reason why I said that was because with my first daughter, I didn't have, I went over 40 weeks. I went close to 42 weeks, almost 42 weeks, because that's what my daughter said I should do. And she said that we should wait for the baby to make a move herself i guess that's also something that people do but with my second baby because i had had a first child experience i obviously could decide that now i want i could i wanted to do something different so i said that i wanted to have her by um 40 weeks so exactly at my 20 like on a due date exactly my due date if she didn't come herself i'll go in for them to induce me now i requested for an induction because i i had had an induction with my first child so i knew the process i knew what i was going to go through i knew what to expect so i told him that i was going to go for an induction if i didn't get natural like labor kicking in so after my last um, doctor's appointment i came back home i was still feeling okay i had lost my mucus plug like a week before or like two even two weeks before but I was still feeling very much okay, very much strong. I wasn't feeling any pain, any contractions. I wasn't feeling any pains, any contractions, nothing of that sort. So I was at home. I was doing the regular, you know, squats here and there, kegels here and there. Hoping, I was actually really hoping that she was kicking herself you know i was hoping that she was kicking herself she would make a move you know because my first daughter didn't induction was what made her made a move, make a move um this girl as well she didn't i think my earring is what's oh i think my earring is what's disturbing here but this girl as well 22nd hit and i was still very much okay no pains nothing i was very happy like very grateful as per usual so like I told my doctors that I was going to come in for an induction if she didn't kick in herself. And 22nd was Friday. So Friday came, we're here, nothing happened. I was good. Mm -hmm. 
So I, my bags were packed. I was ready and I was booked for the next day, 2 p.m. So I knew I was going to go in the next day, 2 p.m. So I knew I was going to have hair over the weekend. I knew for a fact that I was going to have it over the weekend, even though I hadn't told my family yet. I, I told them to expect hair. They knew the due date. Yes, mommy. They knew the due date and everything, but they, they knew that it could come on that due date or not. And then she didn't come on that due date. So they didn't know. We didn't tell them we're going to the hospital and everything. So um, Saturday morning... Like, I mean, just, I, I think I cooked Saturday morning. I cooked quite a heavy amount of food just so that there could be food at home for, because I was going to be in the hospital for a couple of days. And I did, I mean, you're going into labor. You don't know anything could happen. So you could go for CS, which will request, require for you to be in the hospital for a much more longer time. Even though I was going for natural labor, anything could happen. So I was just prepping myself mentally for anything that could happen. So I cooked some food, um, you know, playing music, having fun as she was in my belly on that day. Yeah, it's crazy how she's here. But literally a month ago, she was in my belly. So um, um, Saturday, we went to the hospital. I mean, we left home, went to the hospital. And you, you are required to have a, a baby car, car, what's it called? Car seater. It's a requirement here. If you don't have it, you don't, you can't leave the hospital with the baby. It's literally required. Like you need to have it. So my hospital, the car seat I was in the car, my bags were in the car. Oh, I just it feels like yesterday. <laughs> I'm just remembering it feels like yesterday. It really feels like yesterday. So we got in the car. I lost my way to the hospital. The nurses helped me. I'm telling you guys, literally everything that happened that day, the nurses helped me. They were on the phone. They were so nice. So on the phone the whole time till I got to the hospital, literally till I got to the reception table. And I mean, the I don't know how the nurses call that. The OTD. Or what, they have some name that they call the front desk for, for the hospitals. So I got there. I got checked in. Um, but when you get checked in, um, I, like I said, the process here is different from Ghana. So I haven't done my best story on Ghana, so you probably will not know. But if you had somebody who has given birth, you should, and you live in Ghana, you will know. But here, um, I had my personal nurse that was assigned to me come take me to a room. So they have, <clears throat> they have tons of small, small rooms, like these cubicle rooms that they have machines, these machines that they use to track the baby's heartbeat. So there are lots of them. So immediately when you enter like that, I don't know how, I don't know if it's a ward or something, but you don't see anybody. Everybody's in there, like small cubicle room. Um, but immediately when you enter there, you hear lots of like baby heartbeats, you know, if you've been to like, I mean, if you've seen an ultrasound, you know how the heartbeat sounds and everything. You hear a lot of that so it's like a whole floor for pregnant women. Obviously, what what was it gonna be? <laughs> it's a whole floor for pregnant women. So she she gave me one room. Sorry, mama. So she gave us a room. So so I forgot to say one thing. Because of co um because of the pandemic, you are only allowed to bring one support person. I don't know. You are. It's not like I don't know. That's what's happening. You are not even allowed to tour the hospital. You know, originally before you had you go into labor, you are allowed to go to the hospital, or you have to go to the hospital to know where you're giving birth. To know, like some, you, you just know the environment, and especially in very. I wasn't supposed to say the word, but especially in a pandemic, it's very important that you go to check, you know, to see what you're up against, literally up against. So, um, but because of the, the whole situation, you're not able to go in because there's a pandemic. So I wasn't allowed to go in. So instead I had a video tour of the hospital, um, which you just go and watch on YouTube. So, um, we got there. And yeah, like I was saying, you're allowed to have one support person. So my support person was my husband. So we got there, we got checked in and we're in my little cubicle room. Then they, they give you the attire to put on, the hospital attire to put on and everything. Um, so that they will be able to attach the machines to your body. So I was in that line on my bed and we were in that room for about an hour, about close to two hours, even a little over two hours, I think, because I got to the hospital at two. My time was 2 p.m. So I was there. I got there before two. They didn't check me in till 2 p.m. because my time was 2 p.m. But they are the same people who said that I should get there before 2 p.m. And I got there before two. That's besides the point. From 2 p.m. I was in that room till I remember I was in that room till five. 
I was in that room till 5 p.m. I was in that room till 5 p.m. And then they moved me to my actual labor room. So that's the process that they put you through. You are in one room. They monitor the heartbeat for a while till, till, till like three hours. And then now they move you into the room which you're actually going to go into labor in. So I went into that room. My doctors came by. Obviously, I knew my doctors, but they came by still to introduce themselves. And the anesthes anesthesiology, <laughs> anesthesiology department, they also came by, introduced themselves. They are the ones who give you the um, epidural, the pain medicine and everything. They came to introduce themselves. And then my personal nurse, obviously the nurses are also working in shifts. So every shift, every nurse, will, every shift, a nurse will come and introduce herself to you as your nurse. So that's what happened. So five, six, seven-ish, I think six, seven-ish, they told us, I mean, they came to tell us about what different types of induction they had. So like I said, because I had had an induction with my first daughter already, I knew one type of induction, which was the one that I had with my first daughter. And Ghana, they don't tell you, I don't know, I had my daughter as a private, at a private hospital, but I still, they didn't tell me that they had like different types of induction. They just came, told me, okay, we're going to induce you. This is the type that we're using, blah, blah, blah. I didn't know. I was a first timer. So I obviously didn't know that there were different types of induction that could be done. Are you okay, mama? So, so this time around, I mean, here, they tell you how many types of induction that they have, which ones, um, um, w w what is going to do what to you and how your body, and it all depends on how your body is going to react to the type of induction that they do to you. But also they allow you to choose which one that you want to do. And that's for me, it's on period. Okay. I need to be able to decide it's my body. It's me going into labor. At least let me be able to make a choice. That's, that's for me was what I liked about the service that I got from having my baby here in America. So they told me, they told me we have four different types. Which one do you want? And I'm like, okay, I've had an induction before with my first child. So I think I'm comfortable with the same one that I had with her. So I want to have that one. So they gave me that one. I mean, they came by to now do the process of that induction. And it's a very small medicine that they just, um, what's it called? Inset in your lady part or your peace kololo as i like to call it <laughs> but they just insert it there and then like i said before depending on how your body reacts to that medicine labor starts to pick up if your body is okay with the medicine so um they did that um two three hours later the anesthesiology group came by the main guy came by to tell me um, to let him know if the pain started to kicking and if I wanted to take epidural. In the beginning, I said that I didn't want to take epidural because my first daughter, I went through all natural labor. So this is me. <laughs> I'm ashamed. This is me sitting down thinking I'm strong. Obviously, I'm strong. Don't get it twisted. I'm strong. This girl here, she's strong. But this is me sitting down thinking, oh, I've done labor pains before. Three years ago, I can do it again. <laughs> Tell me why after a few hours I was calling them. I was literally shouting, babe, babe, oh from my <laughs> I was literally shouting, babe, please just tell them that I need a pain medicine. I just need a pain medicine because I can't do it again. So pain, labor, labor pain started kicking in or contractions started kicking in. I say two, two to three hours after, after the induction. So after the induction, I mean, we're just watching movies, just chilled, relaxed, and then the pain started to kick in. Now, when the pain starts to kick in, the first hour, the pain is okay. You know, it's back and forth. It's not so repetitive. So it's okay. You can sort of manage it. I'm, I'm, my pain tolerance, I'll say it's like eight, eight over 10. I'll say that my pain tolerance on a rail is like eight. I'm good with like taking pain. But obviously nobody likes pain, so it's not something that we like. <laughs> but when like I, I I'm just I'll just say that. Let me leave that there. So pain started to kick in. Let me put this girl down. Hey mama. You wanna lay on your bed a little? So a few hours in it's it's eight, nine, ten. I started to feel the real pain at around eleven ish. The pain 
oh my god i think i was at the 50th percentile at this point because the pain that i was feeling right now was just too good to be true <laughs> not too good to be true i mean it was very painful i was beginning to feel like proper actual pain and this is pain that comes and goes away but this time around it intensifies as it like as it goes and come back it comes back and uh, and i'm trying to remember <laughs> like i'm remembering what i was going through and what i kept telling the nurse like whenever it comes the baby's heartbeat is obviously still okay they are monitoring and then they'll come and check on you everything is still okay you know when even when you do an induction they wait all the way till the last minute they wait till you feel that the baby's coming out they wait till you feel that's like your home's like labor kicked you at home and you're going to the hospital that's the same thing that you do with an induction or that's the same way you feel with an induction the baby will do the job itself so my baby was really moving i could feel her all the way my she was like way past my crouch at this point so um the doctors will come and i'll tell them how i feel then the pain goes away so now at like at like 12 I think I couldn't take the pain again. At like 12, I'm like, you know what? I can't take this pain again because the pain, the pain was just unbearable. I felt like, I, let me just let you guys know. It feels like you haven't done it before. I don't know how. This was me thinking, oh, say I've picked Uber before. So picking Uber again will feel the same, obviously. But this one, it doesn't feel the same. Menstrual pain feels the same every frigging month. Labor pains it's probably the same pain, but doesn't feel the same. I don't know how. It literally didn't feel the same. It felt like this pain was way more than when I what what I went through with my first daughter. It felt it felt like I had never gone through this pain before. It felt like it's not three years ago. It just felt so new. It felt like uh -huh. I can't do this. I just said, I just said, I can't do this. I can't. I was like, I can't. I remember my husband was sitting, I was like, babe, I can't. I can't, babe. Babe. Like, I remember. Ah, My husband was a very supportive person. My husband is always very supportive in labor. Like, he's the best person you can ask for in labor. Trust me. Um, he was very supportive. Um, the epidural, we were a bit skeptical because, like I said, we hadn't had it before. And the epidural, let me explain to you how epidural is done. Because at this point, I had called, I was calling in for an epidural. Shamefully. Shame, this is, this is not even shamefully. This is me who said that I can do it. I can do it. I was telling the doctor. The doctors were telling me, you know, okay, you can do it. That's fine. You're a strong woman. <laughs> I know they were saying in their head. Girl, we are Yari. She would take the epidural. Shay, guys, I'm not even joking. At this point, I had called in for an epidural. I had told them that, you know what, please reach out to the team. Tell them that I need them. So the guy, he was so excited, you know, you know, because when you get your job done, it's like, this is my job. I, I like to do it. So he was, he was okay. He was like, happy. Oh, yeah, you, you need it. You need it now. I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> so how epidural is done is, I think my lightning is fluctuating a little, but it's okay. So they insert it into your back literally it needs to be in connection with your spinal cord because apparently not apparently your spinal cord connects literally every joint every bone in your body is connected to the spinal cord the spinal cord has connection it makes you walk so it, in order for them to be able to get to like my my limbs they need to be able to get it through my spinal cord so it basically just I think that's how you feel like when you're in operation or in surgery because they kill the part of the body that they need to work on. So this time around, they wanted to deal with the area where you're feeling the pain, which starts from the abdominal area. So the, they insert it in the back towards that side. And after a few minutes, it's going to kick in. You're, in. you're going to start feeling that the lower part of your body is slowly being numb it's crazy like it was my first experience if you've experienced it before that's okay but for me this was my first experience so i was like i kept telling my husband babe they feel if you like you literally don't feel anything like you pinch yourself nothing you feel that you're pinching something obviously you feel that you're pinching your skin but you don't feel pain so then the pain started to go down but this was me also thinking that the pain was going to go away completely but apparently no 
the guy said that they try as much as possible to not let the pain go away completely because the pain is what will help you push, which was so true. I'm going to talk about that a little, I mean, very soon. But the pain is not something that went away completely. I was still feeling a little bit of the pain, enough for me to feel that the baby was moving, enough for me to feel like I wanted to go in labor. So, so at around 1... At around 1, 1.30, labor for me had started at this point because labor, like actual labor when she's coming out or actual delivery when she's coming out or when the baby's coming out, you feel you feel it in like your, your anal area or your anus. It's so weird to say, but you feel it in that area. You feel like you want to push, like you want to intrigue. You say you, you feel like you want to chim. Opesa will chim. That's how it is. You feel like Upesa would chim. I said, yeah, you're in the private, in the washroom that you want to chim. It's the same way. You feel like you want to chim. So um, I had started to feel like that, but you feel like that for a couple of times before like they come in to do the whole push, push situation. So I had felt that for a couple of times. I felt that till now. I felt like now, no, I can't hold the chim again. <laughs> I, I don't know how to say the chim, the push. Yeah, I can't hold the pushing again. You know, the edge to push yes that's the word the edge to push <laughs> the edge to push you feel the edge to push so you feel the edge to push to the extent that now you can't hold the edge to push again and now you just want to push that's when they come in so i got to that point and then my doctors came in they're like okay it's go time sanitizer you know it's not hand sanitizer like they do the whole cleaning process put on the gloves and put on the stuff and then do the setup and everything and it was go time and I was excited about go time, but go time is the most difficult time of labor. Like all the pain, everything is not difficult than the pushing part. For me, that's what I think, um, because you need all your strength. You need all your concentration. You need everything. Like you need mental agility. Like You need so much to push. And I'm not even joking. It's not even a joke. During that time, it feels so deep. Like during that time, for me, I'm going to say this for me, during that time, you feel like that's the time where it could all go south. That's the time. Like it's just, I'm not trying to say anything, but that's, if you get what I'm saying, please comment down below so that I know that you, you get what I'm saying. But that's the time for me. That's like the point for me where it's like, are we coming or going? You know, like, are you giving out the baby? Are you, is the baby coming? Because you need to put in so much energy because you are pushing out the baby with your strength. It's not um, um, CS. <clears throat> with CS, they are taking the baby out. So you literally don't have to push. But with natural birth, you have to push. So you need so much concentration, so much strength, so much mental strength, like I said. And and that was the time for me. Like that was a, And this, I'm going to just say that the doctors and the nurses here are just very good as compared to i'm not i'm not even trying to compare even though i feel i feel very bad to compare but if i'm doing a comparison here right now i don't know why Ghanaian doctors feel like they need to 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 push you to push like to to yeah like i'm i'm not even joking i've had a baby in ghana before my first child in ghana I'm not going to say it was a bad experience. It was a very good experience. Like I said, I had it in a private hospital because I don't know what a government hospital would have even looked like. I don't even know. But even with the private hospital, the nurses, they're not as nice. When you're going through labor, they feel like they don't have to be nice to you in labor. I don't know. They feel like, you know, like the nurses here, I'm not, like the nurses here were literally telling me, you're almost there. When I feel, I knew that the baby weren't, wasn't even out of anywhere. You, I feel the baby coming out. So obviously, I'm going to feel even if the head is out. The head wasn't even nowhere. They were telling me the head is almost there. You know, it's just those little words of encouragement for me. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying the service was any better. It's still nursing. I still had two babies. I still had my first baby perfectly. When I had it, I was still as strong as I am with this baby. But I'm talking about like the communication, you know, it just gives it an extra touch. It just makes the person extra comfortable to do it, you know, no pressure because I think it's already very pressuring. I don't want to go off tangent, but yeah, like I was saying, 
so that was the time for me i had to do the pushing situation and i started to do the pushing situation i feel like i did a lot more pushes with this baby as compared to what i did with my first baby my first baby i think that because that that's what's going to bring me to the pain part pain was actually a very good factor with helping me push with my first baby because i didn't take an epidural and because you're in pain and you want to be over and done with it's like as soon as possible like you're ready to be done with the whole pregnancy thing you will push and it's so painful that you will push that's just what it is but with the epidural because the epidural medicine had sort of submerged the pain you are pushing with your own strength now like you're pushing with your own force and everything but the pain with i, I hope you guys get it but the pain without the epidural because it's so painful it's like hey, yeah, me, yeah, then you're pushing do you understand like it's so painful it's like when something hurts you originally like it's painful and you know like when something hurts it's like you're crying it's painful it hurts so it's already putting you in that mood and then you need to push out a baby which is also going to require you to be in a little bit of that mood so all of that together makes it very easier for me in my opinion i think that without the epidural it's very easy for me to push because the pain will let you push but with the epidural you feel a lot more relaxed because the pain is not there like that so with the epidural i took a lot more pushes i would say um but the doctors were very very patient very nice said so many nice things to me and at the end of the day the baby was here like eventually the baby came out um and uh that's the moment you know that's the moment is that moment too for me when the baby comes out and then they put the baby on you um the difference is ghana they clean up the baby no i mean not like immediately when they take the baby out immediately when they take the baby out both places they give you the baby you know for you to have some skin to skin me time for the baby to and then the baby is crying oh they're so cute they're so cute when they come out. Let me drink some water because this talking job. <laughs> They're so cute when they come out. Like it's it's just so breathtaking. Um, how they their color looks. They don't look like us when they come out. I mean, they're obviously human, but they look like gray. They look white. They have some white coating that literally covers their body because when they're in the the the, the womb they're in water the whole time they're literally in amniotic fluid the whole time so their skin is like the type that is able to survive in water and now when they come out to land their skin needs to be able to find a way to adjust to land it's crazy it's, it's with this my second child that I, I think I've learned so many things because with my first child, I was with family, there was grandma, there was so many people. So it didn't require me to like observe, observe so many things. But because right from day one, I've had to be the one to do the taking care of, do the pampering, do everything for this baby. I have learned so much. I've known so much. I've just it's just very eye-opening and i love it for myself i just love anything that teaches me so much more than i already know in life so um like i said their skin is like white and then they put them on you so they put hair on me and then like they're doing the other stuff so after the baby comes out they need to you need to push a few extra pushes for your placenta also to come out because it needs to come out apparently it needs to be out of the body it's I think it's a part of the whole baby situation so it comes with the babies with the baby so after the baby come out after the baby came out i am um, they massage your belly a little and then they massage my belly a little and then the placenta also came out and then excess blood you know then i was just chilling with the baby i was just saying don't cry it's just like my first baby that's exactly what i did to my first child as well i said don't cry mommy's here you know it's so cute it's just really cute it just that's the first bonding time that's the first bonding dinghy that you guys will do which is really beautiful and um yeah then they go and put hair on the they they put hair somewhere then um oh this time around my husband cut the umbilical cord i don't know if for my first baby she did he did i don't think i remember the pain was just too much i didn't remember but for this time around he cut the umbilical cord and so cute it was just so cute they asked me if he wanted to do it and i was like yeah and then he did it and it was cute and that's it <laughs> so yeah they they and here so here they don't bathe the baby 
the first 24 hours they don't bathe the baby because they claim or apparently they say that the the coating that the baby comes with is a protective layer which literally protects their skin and helps their skin to transition into the skin that they need for our type of environment so they leave that on the baby so that it's it does the job it absorbs into the skin i don't know what it does but they leave that on the baby and they just wrap her up and here also they don't pierce the baby's ears in ghana they pierce their ears right there in the hospital by here over here they don't do that so you the parents have to do it when you're ready so yeah um so yeah she came out um um she was there they wrapped her up in a cool place and they came to put her in her like little bassinet situation by my side then oh also here they, they there's a thing that they do really cute they use i don't know they put this black ink on the um on my baby's foot on her foot and then it's like they take um a print an imprint of her foot it's so cute i don't know why i put it but when i find it i'll show it to you guys so i'll probably put a picture on the screen if i find it but it's really cute it's like so you have like um you have an imprint of her baby foot like newborn foot on like a frame like a it's so cute it's like a very cute thing that they do they do that and yeah it's just really cute so after she came um then obviously after care so i went to the bathroom the nurse came by talked to me a little about aftercare um and then they give you everything they give you literally everything everything aftercare treatment everything pad panties I mean, just name it they give you everything the baby the baby's clothes muffins hearts pampers everything wipes everything i everything that i took to the hospital i didn't have to use one of it in ghana everything that i took to the hospital i had to use um oh, i'm not i'm not comparing i'm just saying i'm just saying yeah i've had it here before i've had it here before so i'm just saying this is what happens here and here i'm not comparing no offense nobody should come for me in the comments i'm just saying um that here they give you everything because probably they can afford everything but in ghana it's a growing economy so yes it's understandable um but yeah so <clears throat> after she came um after care happened i came back to lay on the bed we were good i was so grateful oh let me just say it i'm so grateful i was always so grateful like i'm always so grateful when i finish going through labor even though it's just my second child so i've done it just once but going through labor is something that you you already know by now you it's just a whole thing so i was so grateful that everything was done most importantly baby was healthy i was healthy i was feeling good the doctors were amazed um i won't say amazed but they were very happy with like my results and everything i was good my pressure everything was good the baby was also very good and her weight was fine like everybody was good and i'm so grateful i'm always so grateful for that factor for this body this body she be going all out for me <laughs> um why won't i take care of her you guys see why i work out see why i want to live a healthy life or why i live a healthy life is just you just need to pay her back with what she's doing for you so after all of that they move you to another room so the labor room is just a labor room you're there for labor and then you're there for like two to three more hours and then they move you to your actual recovery room where you'll be for the next few days that you'll be spending in the hospital so i was moved to another room she came on sunday i had it on sunday i didn't even say that so saturday i, I mean obviously i mentioned that i started feeling pains at 11 so through the 12 um, a.m at dawn so by 2 2 45 she was here 2 45 she was here and so she was a Sunday one. She came Gemini season. <laughs> I couldn't be more grateful, you know. I'm a Gemini. She's a Gemini. It is what it is. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But yeah, I guess, I guess that's it. So we were in our room um, for. I was there Sunday, Monday. I came home on Tuesday. I was there for two days, basically. 
because um they check you to see if everything is fine if they don't need to keep you they will not keep you the fathers they were going to keep me for three days but they asked me if i was if i wanted to leave and i said yeah i'm okay i wanted to come home also so bad because <laughs> i miss my home and i wanted to be home with my baby so i said yeah we came home and yeah that's literally it we've been good we've been grateful and we've been growing since then um we've gone for our doctor's appointment since we came we i'm just really grateful that's all i'm gonna say that's all i'm gonna say so yeah oh i'm really excited to have been able to share this video finally with my first daughter i wanted to do it so bad but because my first daughter is not around i felt like um I couldn't execute that video so much but it's good that i did this and in some ways i was able to even compare both so yeah comment down below if you like this video comment down below if you have any questions also comment down below if you have anything that you want me to film a video about when it comes to like motherhood pregnancy newborns all of that stuff because right now we're current we're current, kind of doing that all right um yeah comment down below if you have anything um if you like the video also give me a huge thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that i love you guys so much follow me on social media platforms akosia behene across all social media platforms i love you i'll see you guys in my next video bye <laughs> hi guys so it's today today is induction day basically labor day um i'm currently at the hospital i am in my room um waiting to be induced i'm gonna be induced anytime soon but yeah that's what's happening right now so yeah i'm here i'm a little anxious but that's okay i mean because it's my first time in a whole different country i'm always saying that in a whole different country but aside that it's not my first time having a baby so i'm not scared of that part i'm just scared of the process and i'm not scared like i'm just i'm just anxious but 